Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to make journal entries in accounting. Now there's a certain set of rules that we need to follow and I call these dealer. The dealer rules where we have the three accounts DEA are dividends, expenses, and assets all take debits to increase and they have a normal debit balance. And then the other accounts LER are liabilities, equity, and revenue that take credits to increase. If you don't know these rules, I've got a previous video that explains the dealer method, explains how to do debits and credits in accounting. So check that out. I have a link below for you. So let's talk about journal entries. So journal entry is basically a shorthand way to get the transaction in the accounting system. Now, what's the goal of accounting? The accounting, in financial accounting, we're trying to issue financial statements. The way that it works is we start with transactions that need to have um, a journal entry need to be recorded. So this is how you may want to conceptualize a journal entry. And this is the date column and then the accounts column. We always put the debit accounts first. There may be more than one, but there's at least one. And then the credit accounts, we're going to indent so you can clearly see these are credits, not debits. And we physically have you know kind of two columns a debit column which is on the left and a credit column on the right so we're going to make journal entries using this format well i have about six different examples where you can start making journal entries and start thinking through how journal entries work using the debit and credit rules we've got to understand this so if you might you might want to take a screenshot of this and then take notes or pause the video write this down really quickly so you know if we have an asset for example, a lot of our transactions will affect cash. If cash goes up, then we debit cash. If cash goes down, we credit cash. And that's the rules we're using. And so you have to understand the rules to make the journal entries. All right. So here we have a little business we're going to start. I think there's like six different transactions. So let's say on January 1st, John Andrews starts a business called Andrews Inc. He gives the business $15,000 cash and receives a thousand shares of capital stock. Now, we use the business entity concept, which means we're making the entry for the business, not for John Andrews personally. So I wanna make an entry, and make a date here, and we're gonna have a column here that's gonna have the accounts. And all my, account, all my transactions here are pretty easy, just one debit, one credit. So you need to think of what's the two accounts what are the two sides of the transaction? That's double entry accounting. And then we're gonna have a debit column and we'll have a credit column. Now, uh, this is easy, it's just gonna be 15,000. So we know we have a $15,000 debit and a $15,000 credit. Because double entry accounting, you have to have at least one debit, one credit. There's two sides to every transaction, two accounts that are affected, and the debits and credits have to equal. Now, I just put in that he received 1,000 shares of capital stock. You look at that and think, oh, well, we must do something with that. But remember, we're making entries for dollar amounts or for you know money amounts if you're talking about pounds or euros or whatever. So this is the beginning part of the entry. We know we have a debit and we know we have a credit. And here's what we need to do. Now, I talked about cash. A lot of the transactions at the very beginning affect cash. Does the business have cash that goes up or does the business have uh, are they paying cash cash goes down you got to figure that out and you understand this you deal with cash all the time so we're going to debit cash to show that for the business cash has increased and then for the business we're going to use capital stock and we're going to credit that so here are our rules that we've that we followed we have an asset that increases and we have a equity that also increases. We have an asset that increases and we have an equity that increases, a debit and a credit. And everyone would see that and they say, oh, okay, what happens is the business received, capital, uh, received cash and issued capital stock. All right, so that's following the rules that we know here so make sure you review those rules, write those down, and make sure you understand what's going on. On January 7th, Andrews performs services for clients and receives cash of $6,000. Okay, the entry is on January 7th. 
the business receives cash. So anytime the business receives cash, we debit cash and the amount is $6,000. What do we credit? Well, we perform services for clients. We receive cash of 6,000. So this is I'm going to indent it service revenue. So what we have is an asset that increase and we have revenue that also increases. So we have a debit, we have a credit, they balance two different accounts. This is how you do it. All right, the next entry, the company performs services for clients and bills the clients $4,000 on January the 11th. So this is January 11th. How is this different than the January 7th entry? We did the work and we received cash in January 7th, the $6,000. We did the work on January 11th, and but we bill the clients. That means they didn't pay cash today. We extend them credit and say, hey, pay us in 30 days. And we could say something like maybe, um, the bill is due in 30 days. That'd be fine. So we know we haven't gotten paid. So what is this? It's still going to be, I'm going to indent, still going to be service revenue. And the amount here is 4,000. And then we know that the uh, debit is going to be 4,000, but what's the debit account? It's not cash, but we received an asset. What's the asset we received? And it's called accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset that goes up. Accounts receivable is the right to receive cash. They owe us cash in 30 days. So that itself is an asset. So what we have, we have the same transaction in terms of asset increases and revenue increases. We're not receiving cash. We're receiving accounts receivable. Hopefully the cash will come in 30 days. So these two are really common mistakes you might make at the very beginning where you say, oh, um, it's only revenue if it's cash. Well, that's not true. It's revenue when you do the work and you receive an asset. So these both are revenue. So what's the revenue? Well, 6,000 plus four is 10,000. What's the cash? Well, the cash flow is 6,000 on account is 4,000. So you, you'll receive maybe next month. So January 11th, you'll receive maybe um, by February 10th or whatever, you'll receive the, the remaining cash. All right, on the 15th, Andrew purchased equipment for $3,000 on a credit. So on the 15th, we buy equipment. Equipment is an asset. To increase an asset, it takes a debit. So equipment, <clears throat> and it's on account, so it's on credit. The debt's due in 30 days. It's going to be accounts. If I could spell accounts, that would be amazing. Accounts payable is different than accounts receivable. The other side of the transaction is accounts payable. And this is for $3,000. We bought equipment for $3,000 and we owe $3,000 on that liability. So what we have is we have an asset that increases and we have a liability that increases. Now, we've had, I think so far, all increases that doesn't matter. They could be increase, decrease, both decrease, both increase, whatever. All right, the company pays electric bill for $300 on the 22nd. So January 22nd, what do we do? Now, it's going to be cash, right? So we know we're going to credit cash. So I'm going to indent cash, and it's going to be for $300. And our debit is $300. What do you think that is? Well, we're using up assets, so it's going to be an expense. What do you think we call that expense? Well, let's call it something like utilities expense. And then credit cash. So we have an expense that increases. And we have an asset that decreases. So you can handle with debits and credits, the system, you can handle all these increases and decreases in these accounts. All right, on January 30th, we borrow $10,000 uh, 
uh, from the bank by signing a three-year note. January 30th, we borrow 10000 from the bank, so that's going to be cash that increases. And we're signing a note, so it's going to be notes payable. That's a liability. The amount is $10,000. So what we have is we have an asset that increases, following those rules, and we have a liability that increases, following the same rules. If you don't remember these uh, debit and credit rules, go back and look at my previous video. We've got more videos, lots of things in financial accounting, all the chapters in financial accounting. We're working through those. I've got articles and I've got videos. Please like this. Add a comment or a question in the comments below. Subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Good luck in accounting.